we see a more definition as to how that happened. Job actually predates Genesis. Job was written before Genesis. In Job 38, uh, he talks about the laying of foundations. The earth was laid out with foundations. <coughs> we see that when that was happening in verse 7, the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Please note, the sons of God in this context are angels, not the sons of Seth. Keep that in mind as we progress into Genesis chapter 6 because this is the understanding we need to have of the phrase, the sons of God. Uh, we see in 1 Samuel 2.8 that the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. The world's sitting on pillars. The foundations were discovered. We got pillars and foundations. It's all through the, uh, the uh, Old Testament. Psalm 102.25, of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth. Proverbs 8.27, when he established the heavens, I was there when he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep. The dry land appeared out of the face of the deep in Genesis. So we get more detail here from these various authors, and there are others. I just didn't have the ability to fit them all on one slide right here. But these are really good to get us started. When we see that the dry land appeared as a result of Yahuwah inscribing a circle on the face of the deep, look up the Hebrew word for inscribe we see that the Hebrew word is chakak, or kalkak, or however you pronounce it, I'm not sure. But basically it means to engrave or to carve something into something else, as if chiseling into like the, the stone for like the Ten Commandments. Please note, you cannot carve a ball into stone. However, you can inscribe a circle into stone, which is what the text says. The word circle is the word chug, which means circle. When we continue to look at this, we see that Isaiah is one of the last authors to write in this regard. A lot of people, when they're describing the earth, want to go to Isaiah 40:22, but you have to realize Isaiah is building upon all the people who he had written before him, like Job and like David and like Solomon and like Moses. So when we get to Isaiah 40:22, which is a verse I have used myself to describe the earth, uh, it says, "It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth." Well, I took Hebrew 101 twice. So that should give you an indication of my aptitude for learning Hebrew. Uh, and some may say I don't even have that great a handle on English. Whatever the case may be, uh, language 101, words mean things. <laughs> and what's interesting about this, especially if you're a King James only type, um, Isaiah knew the difference between ball and a circle. In Isaiah 22:18, he talks about a ball. The Hebrew word used there is dur, ball. He chose a different word when he described the earth and staying consistent with the other authors who came before him in that regard. So Isaiah clearly knew the difference. The King James translators knew the difference. Now the question is, do we know the difference?
Google helps you if you want a Google ball or a Google circle, you might get images such as this. So some say when God looked down on the earth, he saw a circle. Well, if he's looking down from the north, you don't get a circle. The only time you get a circle is if you're either sitting on the sun or directly in between the sun and the earth. If you're looking from any other direction, you get something like that when you're looking down. So I'm just going to put this out there for consideration. I'm not telling you what I believe. I am just putting this out there for consideration. This is a ball. This is a circle. Take with it whatever you want. Here's what really got me messed up in all this. Why am I even talking about this stuff? Because I believe, as all you guys indicated, that we should take the Bible literally. Well, the problem is, when I started to do that with regard to this particular subject, I got myself in a lot of trouble. And some of you know what I'm talking about, if you've been following my YouTube channel and Facebook page. This one really got to me, though, is when we get to the fourth day, and he talks about the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. And it says in three places that he put them in the firmament. Now, I used to teach the same thing that is taught by Kent Hovind and Carl Baugh and others, that the firmament was a canopy, an ice canopy that surrounded the earth. And it's a, good, it's a great theory. And that, you know, so the theory goes, something impacted it probably, and the firmament uh, disintegrated. The windows of heaven, as it were, opened up, and the canopy disintegrated over a period of 40 days and 40 nights, and it rained down on the earth. Great theory. Pretty awesome. There's a couple problems with it, though. Um, number one, uh, we have Psalm 148, verse 4, says, in a post-flood context, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be, at the time of David, above the heavens. There's still water up there. Number one. But this is the bigger problem. When you look up the Hebrew there, you see the, in the red, it's Berekiah, uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. The, the point is there's a letter bait preceding the Hebrew word. I learned this much in Hebrew 101, taking it twice, that when a word is preceded with the prefix of bait, it means in, not outside and around. If you take it literally, from Genesis to Revelation, the earth is consistently described by Holy Spirit-inspired authors as something like this where you basically end up with a fixed, not moving, spinning, or orbiting earth that is circular with edges, and it has corners, pillars, foundations, etc. And it's under a dome within which the sun, moon, and stars were placed on day four. Now, I created this model just trying to take the Bible literally. I'm going, okay, if I just read the text for what it says, and I didn't have any preconceived notions in my mind reading the text, what would I come up with? And that's what I came up with. Something set on foundations, circular, carved you know, in a circle, with a dome within which the sun, moon, and stars were placed. And it seemed to fit all the descriptions that I could see, like uh, Isaiah 66, 1, et cetera. Um, and when I put this drawing out on the internet, somebody sent me this picture of a footstool. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, wow, that, that looked almost exactly like the depiction that I came up with just going through the, the various descriptions. Now, that's the inside of a bigger structure uh, as I put more descriptives to the model where I believe it's something along these lines, again, taking the scriptures literally, where there are other scriptures that talks about God walking on the circle of heaven. So I've got a circular platform over the dome, which would serve like as a footstool. His throne is up there uh, on the top. And down below is this thing that's circular with a dome set on pillars. Okay, let's go a little crazier here. What about Job 26.7? He stretches out the north over the empty space, space and uh, place and hangeth the earth on nothing. See? Aha! Job proves the earth is hanging in space. I've used that scripture myself numerous times. See? That proves it. The earth's hanging in space. Well, the problem is Job had a few things to say uh, even prior to Job 26. In Job 9.6, he acknowledges the pillars of the earth. Uh, we see in Job 38, where he's talking about the foundations and all that stuff and laying the foundation. Other authors in 1 Samuel, we see the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon the pillars. Huh. So could it be, then, that Job's not con contradicting himself or others, but there's another way of looking at this. I think Job is confirming that the earth is hanging on no thing. It is not hanging on or from anything. In other words, all through scriptures we see over and over and over again that it is set on pillars. So if I said to you, I am in want for nothing, 
you would understand, well, Rob doesn't need anything, right? Well, I think that's in the context of what Job himself has said in chapter 9 as well as in 38, as well as other scriptures, that he's saying the earth's not hanging on anything because all the authors are telling you it's set on pillars. NASA, the science community, the top elite are preparing us for something. The great deception is coming to our world. The scientific community talking about other life, discovering planets, the entire Big Bang universe is a hoax. The entire Big Bang universe they have constructed is to enslave us into the great deception that's coming into this world. The great deception has been planned for years. Satan, the god of this world, is preparing mankind for the great deception that's coming into the world. But the new world order and that agenda fits in very well. If you put people's eyes to the sky, not unlike the Tower of Babel, people unite and it's satanic. God dispersed that. God, that was not something God um, endorsed. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's a mystery. Uh, I don't think it's complicated in regards to uh, the agenda and, and what else could be behind this deception. You read, you know, read the Bible and it's just like, you're just in awe. You're like, you know there's mm -hmm. a creator. You know that we were put in an enclosed creation. And to me, that just screams, yes, there is a creator. Could this world be a lie? What does the Bible say? We need to look. It says very clearly in the word of God, this creation. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Isaiah 40, 22. It is like clay under the seal and its features stand out like a garment. Job 38, 14. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, Proverbs 8, 27. He has inscribed a circle on the face of the waters at the boundary between light and darkness, Job 26, 10. We have been lied to about this world. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in its hand the key to the bottomless pit. Revelations 21. How does this work on a spinning ball flying through space? After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Revelations 7, 1. Corners on a spinning globe? Has thou like him spread out the sky, which is strong, as molten looking glass? The sky is strong. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a tower with its tops to the heaven, and let us make a name for ourselves. Genesis 11 4. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Matthew 4 8. How is this possible? on a spinning ball flying through space. Heaven is my throne and the earth my footstool, says the Lord. Isaiah 66, 1. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. 1 Samuel 2, 8. 